it has finally happened. I have purchased a brand new smartwatch. Was this a way to improve my life with newer, more specialized gadgets? Or was it just another way to prove to myself and to my viewers that I'm more than just a tech hoarder? I might be onto something here as this is the second watch purchase in a row, less than two weeks since my Casio lineage acquisition. Funny enough, this one is not even a smartwatch. It's an interesting proposition with a design philosophy set more in the 1980s than in the 21st century, but it has also great construction and beautiful materials. You can find a link to this review right here. But enough intro, let's just dive into this brand new Huawei GT2 Pro with the unboxing. So I bought this thing at a physical store. Um, it cost me about 145 euros or so, so a pretty good deal in 2022. Uh, the reasoning for uh, buying this watch, well, it's rather a, a strange one. I looked at the features, mainly I want simplified features, but I'm also a sucker for well-built gadgets like this one. So I just could not resist this titanium build and leather strap. It's simply exquisite and to put it in the words of another more experienced reviewer, well, this is Swiss watch quality right here. So you can see the titanium um, casing, a ceramic back for extra, I don't know, care for the skin when you place it on your skin. It, the leather band is excellent. It's simply exquisite. My main concern is that I'm going to ruin it by wearing this Thing during sports and other uh, workouts or maybe physical activities. But let's put the watch away for a second and show you what the packaging has to offer. Um, one thing to note about this packaging, it's exquisitely built. The box itself um, is well built as well, not just the product. Though I do find this gold um, accent and this Huawei clam looking thing logo a bit tacky but and I would say in typical Chinese fashion not to um, offend anybody but Chinese uh, culture tends to uh, put extra uh, well, extra accent on golden things and so on so yeah don't don't be surprised about this choice color here is the um, charger for the watch. It's a USB charger, but it's also supposed to be magnetic, yes, and it holds pretty well into place, though not as well as a Galaxy unit, I believe. So yeah, already there are smudges from my hand. Let's dive on in further to see what we have in the packaging also. So some booklets here, I don't know what they do, the warranty card and additional information, I guess the owner manual here, right here. It's a fairly thin booklet but anyway no need for additional things. So anyway folks these are the contents for the Huawei GT2 Pro box and general packaging. Let me just put these booklets away. Also these, this sheet of nylon, I don't know why I'm holding on to that one, nevertheless, I'll put it there. Uh, this holding piece that holds on to the watch when it's new. Back in it goes. Uh, just one quick mention that um, I've heard other reviewers uh, mention that the GT2 Pro Nebula Grey with the leather uh, strap over here would, was supposed to ship with an additional um, silicon black um, 
strap though mine doesn't seem to have it in the packaging so the black version was supposed to be the cheaper one only with a silicon band and the gray one this nebula gray with a leather strap would be the more premium variant of the gt2 pro which included the silicon um, uh, strap as well though it seems to be market dependent because sadly I didn't get one and I'm kind of worried because this is a very fine piece of uh, manufacture here so very nice leather strap and I'm afraid I'm going to damage it by uh, sweating all over it during my physical exercises so I guess I have to buy an additional strap but that's just details let's just try to turn this thing on and go ahead and test it so the GT2 Pro let me first explain why I got this specific model it's very fashionable and speaks to me in a certain manner only a few other objects could it's a mix of style, understating design philosophy and build quality along with a material choice that makes this an object of, of desire, at least for me. It's very affordable and offers great functions for its price point. Of course, it's yesteryear's flagship watch, though I will say as a first experience, it's certainly not a bad one. This little guy is jam-packed with features. GPS, SPO2 sensor, AMOLED screen, sapphire glass, titanium case, genuine leather strap. When it comes to features, I really feel I needed all these ones mentioned above. Yeah, sure, I could do without the premium touches like the leather strap, the titanium case and the sapphire glass. Then again, I like spoiling myself now and again, as all of us do. But most important aspect of all, I like a smartwatch that holds a battery. This is no juice sucker. At two weeks standby time and a week at the very least for a power user experience and I can really believe it. I have charged this thing to approximately 97% more than two nights ago and it's now at 87% with two hiking trips and a couple of other light activities or occasional usage. Look, even if you have a five-day autonomy with this thing, it's more than acceptable. Its direct competitors like Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 will never reach this level of battery life. But let's get on to some of the not so great aspects of this watch. Battery life is great because it doesn't have more than 32 megabytes of RAM. Yes, you heard that right. 32 megabytes. When Samsung offers 1 or 1.5 gigs of RAM. It's not a deal breaker since Sammy is using all that RAM so you can install apps on the watch. Huawei on the other hand takes a rather different approach to this problem. It offers you a plethora of apps standard and you can connect the watch passively to the phone to get a more comprehensive experience. I rather prefer this approach as I consider the watch a compl complementary device to the smartphone, but some people might find this arrangement a bit lacking. Second thing that I don't really feel so confident about is the screen. Look, don't get me wrong, it is an AMOLED and it's a beautiful one, but I still still sort of feel that it's below Samsung somewhat and I'll show you what I mean right now. So this is the Huawei watch and this is the Samsung watch. Look, I know it's a combination of menus and uh, things that can uh, uh, differ more than just the display but somehow I feel that Samsung still sort of offers a slightly better design and a more impressive experience when it comes to the visuals. 
also the uh, Samsung has this thing where you can rotate this bezel even if it's imaginary and just switch between the functions more easily Huawei doesn't offer this option so some conclusions well I got this thing for about 145 euros which to me is more than reasonable price for a good looking quality smartwatch that offers everything you can ask for when it comes to premium materials boy does this thing really deliver I am a bit disappointed that the bundle it came with didn't include a second silicon strap and the charging pad does not offer a separate removable USB Type-C cable. Some reviewers have hinted at this, so it was supposed to come in its original packaging with a removable USB Type-C a charging cable and a second silicon strap this one didn't so yeah the charging pad is of course wireless and magnetic and another interesting thing I cannot say this for sure because I don't really own a Galaxy watch with an SPO2 sensor but it seems that Huawei's SPO2 sensor works better than Samsung's yeah, the straps are also 22 millimeters removable straps. These watches fit any other strap with a 22 millimeter distance here. Honestly, for this amount of money, I don't think you can do better. An experienced YouTuber in my country has properly stated that the build quality and the materials in the smartwatch are akin to Swiss offerings and not just smartwatches, but established brands with tradition. So Huawei really did great on this. One more thing I like about this watch is different. It's a different brand than that of my smartphone. So I am able to fly under the radar when it comes to streamlining data. Well, <laughs> that's what I like to tell myself. I don't know if it's true. I own a Samsung phone and now a Huawei smartwatch. Well, I guess that's it for me. I hope you have found this uh, review somewhat entertaining and a bit informative. My take on this thing, look, if it's under 150 euros and you like the construction, just go for it. I honestly don't think you could regret this decision. So that has been all for me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.